Back when I was in my early 20s, there was a wonderful selection of small displacement, two-stroke motorcycles that were perfect for new riders. But those bikes all but disappeared towards the end of the 80s due to stricter emission standards. But about five years ago, a whole new wave of small displacement, four-stroke sport bikes started to show up at your local dealership. Bikes such as Honda's CBR 300R, BMW's 310R, the Kawasaki Ninja 300, and KTM's RC390. Rounding out that list was Yamaha's YZF R3, which recently got a full makeover. Just take a second to soak in the new fairing. Definitely more sleeker, more aggressive. Thanks in part to a reshaped fuel tank and those sharper LED headlights. Behind the fairing sits a new LCD instrument panel that closely resembles the one on the Big Brother R1, with bar graphs, gear position indicator, and a host of other readouts. While under the bodywork is a very smooth, quick revving, liquid cooled, fuel injected, dual overhead cam, 321cc twin cylinder engine. Up front, you'll find a 20% stiffer inverted 37mm fork, a preload adjustable shock out back, and excellent 17 inch Dunlop Sportmax 300s all round. The new R3 brakes definitely provide better feedback over the previous generation, and ABS is available. So how does the R3 work out on the open road? Well, this week we invited someone who knows this bike intimately, because they road raced one all last summer in our Amateur Lightweight Sport Bike Series. So Tony, I thought you would be the perfect person for this motorcycle because you raced one all summer long in our division. I know, in the Motorcycle Experience Lightweight class yeah. with the CSPK. Oh, such a hoot. This yeah. bike is so much fun on the track and on the street as it turns out because I got to try it today on the street. Yeah, so you've like logged all kinds of miles with your knee down. Now you have to log a few miles with your knee up and a license plate on the back instead of a racer's plate. So what, what, what did you think? Did it feel very similar? Did it feel similar to your, your, your race bike? Absolutely. This, this bike has got a, the R3 has to be one of the best handling motorcycles I've ever ridden. It's just, it's a nice, neat little package and it just operates and feels really nice and light and works really well. Yeah, now let's talk about the package in terms of the power. What did you think of the 300? It creeps up on you. If you open up the throttle, this thing comes alive and it it takes off. I mean, right. you're, you're quickly up to 100 kilometers an hour. Yeah. Just going through the gears, it quickly, you're, uh, you're moving right along. So, you know, it's a little bit of a creeper. You think that, oh, 300 cc's, it's not much, but you should see how fast we go with these on the racetrack. It, it's, and we're not doing any modifications to the motor. That's right. They're the same as someone could go and buy off the showroom floor. Yeah. So it does ask you to work a little bit more in terms of, you, in order to get the most out of these bikes, you've got to rev them up more, that's all. You that's can't right. short shift them. That's right. But you know, even with this motor, you can short shift it if you're, um, you know, just cruising along. I tried that today and mm -hmm. it, it it handles it. It, it doesn't uh, bog or anything. So right. um, it's not like a, um, you know, like the old 125 uh, uh, motocross bikes where, you know, you're going to bog it if you don't rev the, right. the crap out of it. But no, this can cruise along at a low speed um, if, you, if that's how you want to ride it. And if you want to um, kick it up a notch, get on the 400 series uh, uh, roads uh, mm -hmm. here in Ontario then uh, it has the speed. What about the brakes? The brakes work, I mean, it hasn't got much weight, so it doesn't have to really stop a whole lot, uh, but the brakes are there and they work really well. The only thing is it has a cable clutch uh, lever, cable. Yeah. Um, it does tend to get uh, loose, so you would have to uh, adjust that and maintain that regularly. Right, stay on top of the cable actuated clutch. Yes. Okay. So it looks to me and it feels to me like a very small bike in terms of its height, which is really nice. It makes it accessible to a lot of people. Yeah. But the bike also has inner bigness. Like it's still a big full size bike. I'm not even sure you could outgrow it. I mean, if, you've, if it fits you, it might be the bike of your life. Who would you recommend this to? I would recommend this bike to 
anyone that has been out of motorcycling for a while and wants to get back in and uh, just ride some pure joy. Yeah. Um, anyone that is uh, a new rider that um, wants to ride something that's um, a good basis to learn from. Mm -hmm. um, anyone with a shorter inseam. You know, I'm I'm five nine and um, I have a lot of uh, length to me. I fit quite nicely on it, but yeah. um, I've seen other people on them that are quite a bit smaller, five six, five five, and it fits just beautifully. It's not very often that you can ride a bike to its limits. It's really fun. Yeah. Yeah. They call that ringing it out, don't they? Yeah. Well, you guys were They're definitely ringing, ringing it, out. it out at most court at the last round for the That's finals. That's right. So uh, it was exciting to see that and it was wonderful to see you here riding it on the street as well. So thank you so much, Tony. Thank you, Dave. Great job.